On the Notre Dame campus, the football optimism of September has given way to the reality of November. The Irish now need to win two of their three remaining games to become bowl eligible. They'll take the field today at Notre Dame Stadium for the final time this season, Senior Day. And in a touch of irony, their offense will be led by freshman Tommy Reese, making his first career start. The last two years, Notre Dame has lost on Senior Day, and they're underdogs today against 14th-ranked Utah with an impressive 8-1 record. They're only lost a week ago to TCU. So Utah attempts to bounce back and prove they belong among the nation's elite on one of football's biggest stages, Senior Day at Notre Dame. afternoon in Indiana senior day at Notre Dame the seniors just being greeted by their parents and now for the last time this season here come the Irish their parents 36 Notre Dame seniors although 11 of them can apply to the university for another year of eligibility there's Tommy Reese 18 year old quarterback set to make his first career start today after the injury to Dane Christ a week ago in the loss to Tulsa Chris was operated on and is out for the rest of the season with a knee injury and coming down the tunnel for the first time in their history, led by their coach, Kyle Whittingham, here are the Utes of Utah, ranked number 14 in the nation. And greeted by the expected chorus of boos from the Notre Dame faithful. ready for the Irish and the Utes. Notre Dame coming off a bye week, a much needed week to get some mental and physical refreshment after the tough weeks they've had in recent weeks. And uh, as we look forward to it, Dane Chris, as we mentioned, is out. Tommy Reese, the freshman, under center for the Irish. And Tom, an 18-year-old true freshman that really looks like he's about 12. <laughs> now, against Tulsa, he threw the football 54 times, including four touchdowns, but also three interceptions. He's got to reduce or eliminate negative plays for Notre Dame to win. Utah's predominantly a single high free safety team. There'll be opportunities out on the edge. That means Michael Floyd. 11 catches against Tulsa. It'll be up to Tommy Reese to take advantage of those single matchups out wide. Well, Utah ran into a buzzsaw last week against TCU, and the Horn Frogs really took them out of what they wanted to do. Yeah, and I thought they got out of the run game too early, so I think it's back to basics today with their two tailbacks, Matt Asiata and Eddie Wine. They've combined for 18 touchdowns, and I really believe their quarterback, Jordan Wynn, is much more effective when he's a complement to the run game. And finally, you better identify <laughs> Shaky Smithson, one of the most dynamic playmakers in the country. He's got three punt returns for over 70 yards. He averages almost 18 yards per reception. He'll line up at the Wildcat and Tom. He's even thrown the football once this year, and what a surprise, 32 yards and a touchdown. Well, let's get Coach Brian Kelly's thoughts on this senior day matchup. He's down on the field with Alex Flanagan. Coach, celebrating the seniors on this day, what has that group of young men come to mean to you in your first season here? Well, they've provided some leadership that was much needed in some very difficult times. I think you learn a lot about each other when there is adversity. And 
life lessons. Uh, sometimes we get caught up too much in football and the trappings around it, but uh, just great character young men. Starting a freshman quarterback today, what did you tell him before you came onto this field? You know, that we'll help him manage it. He doesn't have to go out there and do it himself. He just needs to be Tommy Reese. He doesn't need to be anything more than that, and he did a pretty good job a couple of weeks ago. I think he's got good preparation, and we'll manage it for him. Tom, we'll find out a lot about who Tommy Reese is coming up. We will. He's being thrown uh, to one of the best teams in America as Utah comes to Notre Dame for the first time ever. First meeting between these two schools and the Utes with an 8-1 record. Notre Dame riding an 11-game losing streak to AP-ranked teams, and they've lost six straight in the month of November, including the last two Senior Day matchups. So Utah is set to kick it off with Nick Marsh. And taken by Jackson. Here's Bennett Jackson getting to the corner. And Jackson crosses the 35. Knocked out of bounds after a good return all the way to the 44-yard line. Bennett Jackson getting the game underway with a rousing start for the Irish. And let's take a look at our Adidas starting lineups for... First of all, the Irish with Notre Dame, Chris Stewart. Farewell game for him, the law student slash football player. And today, the Irish will open with two tight ends, Eifert and Ragone. And Tommy Reese, the 18-year-old quarterback, won't be 19 until May of 2011. And here he is at Notre Dame Stadium on senior day against a ranked opponent. First down handoff to Sierra Wood. Wood replacing the injured Armando Allen. And there's Tommy Reese from the Chicago area. The first Notre Dame freshman to start since Jimmy Clausen did it three years ago. And coming from Lake Forest High School in Illinois, which ran a similar sort of offense to this one. So had a little bit of a head start. He also came in early from high school. Came in in January. Second down. Wood again fumbles the football. But it's going to be ruled down. No fumble. The ball ruled down as Wood crossed to the midfield strike. The ball came free, but he'll be ruled down by this Mountain West Conference officiating crew. And you kind of see the good and the bad with Sierra Wood here. Nice contact, nice running through a tackle, but you've got to hold on to the football. I know he's ruled down. But that's something that'll drive Brian Kelly nuts. He's a supremely talented kid. But if you don't protect the football, I promise you, you won't beat Utah. Third down and three for the Irish. Opening drive of the game. Reese, handoff. Wood got nothing. Stacked up in the line of scrimmage. And the first to get there was Silver Salinga from his defensive tackle spot. Pretty interesting first three snaps. Now the quarterback is still on the field. The ball's on the 50-yard line. Are they going to go for it here? Three consecutive runs. It's fourth and a long three. See the signals coming in from the sideline for Notre Dame. They are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and three. Toss. Wood. It appears to be short. And so the Irish gambling going for it on fourth down around midfield. And it was Brian Blacken that made the stop for the Utes. They hold on fourth down and take over with great field position. And Blecken is just off the screen here. Watch what happens with support. Blecken number two, the true freshman, sees it, trusts it, beats the block, and makes the hit. That is a great job at defeating the block of Eifert and making a ta tackle. We talk about the true freshman, Tommy Reese. How about the true freshman, Brian Blecken, coming up large? So the Irish defense put in a spot here against the Ninth ranked scoring offense in NCAA football, averaging 41 a game. Handoff, Asiata, tailback, makes it to midfield and just beyond the midfield strike into Irish territory. Look at our Adidas starting lineups for the Irish offense. The senior center, Zane Taylor, all Mountain West, and the strongest player on the team. And Brooks, the leading receiver, he has 40 catches and four touchdowns this season. Tom, I really disagree with the decision by Brian Kelly not to punt the football with a freshman quarterback. Put the ball back at the 10-yard line, give Utah a long field, and take that pressure 
off of your quarterback as far as field position is concerned. And the Irish unable to run the ball as has been the case in the last few weeks. Jordan Wynn, the quarterback from the shotgun. Wynn fires across the middle to Smith and it's complete. First down for Utah. Darius Fleming, the outside linebacker, he got right in behind him. No redirection, gets behind Fleming, forcing 22 Harrison Smith to make the tackle. And that's the kind of rhythm that Jordan Wynn is most efficient in. Short passes, he can throw the slant, the double slant, and you got to watch these guys with run after catch. 11-yard gain to the Irish 38. That'll be a false start against the Utes. Looked like John Cullen, the left tackle. <laughs> well, he's got good feet, but you don't want to show him there, John. And as we said, a Mountain West officiating crew. Scott Novak is the referee as we look at the Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense. Senior Day, of course, finds Ian Williams on the sidelines with an injury, so Sean Swinar starts at the nose for the Irish. That's a crucial position in their defense. First down and 15 after the false start penalty. Four down linemen. They want to run the cross the quarterback. Fake it one way. Hand it off to Asiata. And he's stuck for no gain on the play. Irish not fooled as they uh, faked the wide run. Instead gave it up the middle to Asiata. And here are Adidas Notre Dame starting lineups on defense. And a look at Schwan Schwinar getting that start at the nose tackle with Ian Williams out with an injury. And uh, Manti Teo, 100 tackles, remains among the national leaders. And it's the final home game for Darren Walls with his four career interceptions. Second down, 15. Wynn retreats the pass. Has a man wide open, catches made. Devontae Christopher grabs the football, but uh, Notre Dame was giving him a little room and uh, preventing the run after the catch, and Gary Gray did just that. Stopped him, it'll bring up third and long after a gain of five yards. And you're right, exactly. It's a soft corner here, and a nice job by Jordan Wynn. They ran the vertical with the inside player, and there's the little hitch. Good tackle, but they pick up seven yards or so, get it back into a manageable third down situation after the penalty. Empty backfield. It's a three by two set. Win being chased. Got away. Now looking downfield. Fires and it is complete. It's going to be close to the first down and they'll mark it apparently enough for the first down. Fatu Moala only uh, his third reception of the season as Jordan Wynn did a good job scrambling and finding his man. Coming off the edge right there you've got to make a play. Catherine Lewis Moore you can't allow unimpeded progress of the quarterback to the edge. He has all day to identify his target. Moala and Blanton comes up late and another big play by Utah. 11 yard gain first down as they convert a third and long and keep the drive going now to the Irish 27. Win. Hands off to wide, and he wide with his first carry of the day. Goes inside the Irish 25-yard line. And they get in that two-back set. They want to run the football, and Tom. That's what we talked about up, up top. They, they want to get back to the basics. Who are they? They're a balanced offensive team that's a much better offensive team when they run first and allow Jordan Win to play action. There you see the numbers for Win through nine games, 65% completion. <laughs> and I mentioned that the Notre Dame freshman looked like about 12. Jordan Wynn may be a sophomore, but I'm not sure he looks any older either. <laughs> He's a sophomore who played six games last year, five of them starts as he rolls again to get away from Darius Fleming and has to throw it away. So Wynn throws it away to save a sack. <laughs> Jordan Wynn from Oceanside, California. Sophomore who played uh, six games, five starts last year with eight touchdowns and four interceptions. He wound up in a big way, though, as MVP in the Poinsettia Bowl, throwing three touchdowns against Cal. 
There's Brian Smith, and the whole key with what they do is, is disrupting that crossing route. That's who we wanted. As soon as he disrupted the route, all of a sudden there's nowhere to go. He's got to throw the football away, and that's what you want, Utah wants to do. Hit their guys, run after catch, and underneath crossing route. Another third and long for the Utes. Man coverage across the board. And a penalty against Utah for a false start. On the offense, number 72. Like our penalty. Third down. Slaughter off. Left guard. False start. It's going to make it uh, third down and even longer. Third and 12 now. Their second false start on this drive. Little twitch there by the left guard. Slaughter off. And as you said, Tom, now you're at 37. You've got a certain percentage of your playbook. Third and 12. It's a whole different equation here. And keep in mind, field goal-wise, you're right on the borderline also. Win changing the protection. Jordan Wynn stands and heaves to the end zone. And incomplete off the hands of Luke Matthews. Matthews and Gary Gray fighting down the field. And the pass falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And this is a man-to-man -man situation. He allows the outside release of Luke Matthews with a little bit of separation. Almost offensive interference with Matthews pushing off, but good coverage by Gray. Ball's overthrown, and now a long field goal attempt. Senior Joe Phillips will attempt it. He's hit 9 of 10 field goals. 48 is his longest. This one will be 47 yards. From 47 yards, Phillips' kick is up, and... It is good. So given a short field after Notre Dame was stopped going forward on fourth down, the Utes are able to get a field goal, and they lead Notre Dame 3-0. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By ADT Security Services, always there. By Xerox. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. And by U.S. Bank. All of us serving you, U.S. Bank. It was about an hour before the game, the trumpet section of the Band of the Fighting Irish beneath the Golden Dome in the administration building with a little serenade, one of the great traditions of a home game at Notre Dame. Rainy afternoon, but not too cold. And... Uh, the Utes with a 3 0 field. There's a look at Jackson who had the nice return of the opening kickoff, which went for naught as the Irish were stopped on fourth down. Nick Marsh will kick it off for the Utes. Short kick by Marsh, taken by Jackson. Bennett Jackson stopped this time short of the 25 yard line. Good special teams play that time by the Utes after he had had the big return on the opening kickoff. We'll take a break with Utah leading Notre Dame by three. Time now for Chalk Talk, presented by Travelers. You try to take some things out of his hands. Uh, you know, Tommy's got a great grasp of the offense, but I think if we can help him relative to play calling and some of the things that we're doing, even from the sideline, I think that's, that's the plan to, to help a young quarterback um, who at this time last year was playing high school football. That's our Travelers Chalk Talk. Coach Kelly talking about his freshman quarterback, Tommy Reese, trying to simplify things for him a bit. Here his numbers on the season. Had the big 50-plus attempt game against Tulsa in relief of the injured Dane Chris two weeks ago. First down, Irish, from their own 23-yard line. There's a movement. Looks like it might have been offside, which drew the uh, Irish player. Selinga, was it uh, an offside call? Offside. Was indeed. Defense, number 98. Jumped into neutral zone, caused the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty. First down. Selinga with the offside gives the Irish a first-and-five situation. As you look at uh, Kalani Sataki, the defensive coordinator of the Utes, who is the only one of the players and staff, or at least the only one of the staff uh, that has really been into Notre Dame Stadium. He played as a member of the BYU Cougars at Notre Dame Stadium. Almost jumped again. Number four consecutive runs for nine yards the first possession. They're going to start to throw the football. <laughs> and now the Irish... 
forced to spend a timeout. <laughs> Look at Brian. He's going, come on. It, keep in mind, Notre Dame wants a fast pace. And even though you've got a freshman quarterback who you're trying to help, you got to get over the football and go. Well, we mentioned Kalani Sataki, the defensive coordinator of Utah. Uh, no stranger to Notre Dame Stadium. Back in 1994, he was a freshman when the BYU Cougars came in to Notre Dame Stadium. And he would provide the key block on a Jamal Willis touchdown that helped BYU defeat the Irish that day, 21 to 14. That was pretty cool talking to him. He remembered it like it was yesterday. And so after uh, spending the timeout, Notre Dame ready to go on first and five. And Sierra Wood still unable to run, stopped for a loss in the play. The Irish uh, running game has just been non-existent in recent games. They just have not been able to run the football. And they really do need to be able to, and they're trying to take the pressure off them. And Braxton Cave, watch him get out on the defensive tackle. Now he's underneath them, and he buries them. That's a situation where the running back Wood has to help him and cut it up inside that block. And that's what Brian Kelly told us the other day. Wood's got to be more patient. Second down. Green's pass is incomplete. Batted down. Christian Cox came away with the football, but it'll be an incomplete pass. It's going to bring up third down for the Irish offense, and Reese and company have not been able to get anything going. Yeah, it was a corner blitz from the backside, picked up by Wood, and then the knockdown. It looked like uh, Silver Silinga there got his big paw up there, and Cox almost got the interception, bringing up a third and about six, Tom. Reese. In the pocket, got protection, threw it into a crowd, and it's incomplete. Intended for DeMal Camara, who's making his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium. A dangerous pass from Reese. It falls incomplete. You know, I really felt like he did a great job sliding in the pocket, but then he forced it to Kamara. There's too many people around Kamara. You can't throw that. Michael Floyd coming the other way was wide open as he broke his route and moved inside. Now here's Shaky Smithson, who leads the nation in punt returns, averaging nearly 23 yards a return, number one in FBS. And the punt trying to punt it away from Smithson, who catches up to it at the 30. Now trying to go outside and get some running room, corralled and taken down at the 30-yard line. That time, uh, the nation's leading punt returner did not get a single yard after a 41-yard boot. So you see there's a flag on the play. During the return, blocking it back, return team number 49, 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. So another Utah penalty, this one by Trevor Riley. It'll cost the Utes, but they'll have the ball when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. fans check out a live simulcast of today's action on NBCSports.com or if you're on the go watch from your iPhone and iPad download the Indy Central app available on iTunes second possession for the Utes they lead Notre Dame 3-0 726 to go first quarter and Utah from its own 19 yard line with their quarterback Jordan Wynn right there Reggie Dunn first time in the game fastest player for Utah Win gives it to him. Reggie Dunn makes a nice cut up to get about five yards on first down when it looked like he was going to be corralled at the line of scrimmage. And they, they're a multifaceted run team. Counter and power, but also zone. That was a zone read play, and typically Reggie Dunn is a wide receiver. But he's the fastest guy on the team, and I really believe they want to get him touches, regardless of what position. In the return game, a wide out at running back, because they think he's a game breaker. And look where he is now, Tom. He's in the look, slot. You got it. And in motion is done. And this time they'll give it to wide. And stacked up. Just shy of the first down marker, it would appear. It'll be marked short. It'll be third down and about a yard for the Utes. 
and that's a setup play right there. The jet sweep with number 14, Reggie Dunn, they fake that. Ultimately, they'll come back to that. They're hoping that Notre Dame's defense, as he comes across, they're hoping Notre Dame widens and they give the football inside. Later on, they'll come back and hand the ball off. Nice job by Notre Dame, but a short third and short situation for the youth. Third down and one from the 28-yard line. Defensive tackle right there lined up at tight end. That's their heavy group. Number 92 and 93, both defensive tackles, Assad and Seikori. Counter play, and they give to wide, and he picks up the first down before being thrown back and losing his helmet. On the hit by Notre Dame, led by Brian Smith, the first man to arrive on the scene. Backside guard, Tavita Stevens pulls. See, Tavita Stevens pull, and then watch the block at the point. Try to collapse it downhill. Good job by Stevens. The running back cuts it up inside. And Tom, exactly what we talked about in our pre-show, which is this is not a finesse run team. And I think they got away from their running attack way too early when they got down 14-0 early last week against TCU. First down from the 33. Rolling to his left. Win. Loads and fires. And the pass is picked up. Intercepted by Harrison Smith. Boy, did he do a great job. He tracked the wide receiver, Jeremy Brooks, all the way across the field in man coverage and then undercut the receiver and made the play. I give him a ton of credit there. Watch 22 here. He's going to come all the way across. Watch what happens off the play action. Safety inverts. He picks up the crossing receiver. That's textbook safety play. Now he comes underneath, makes the play on the ball. That is a big-time play by Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith, the senior from Knoxville, Tennessee, although he is eligible to apply to the university for another year of eligibility. So we'll see if the offense now can do anything with the turnover. I'm going to get Michael Floyd involved here. And the second timeout taken by the Irish. And Brian Kelly says, son, I can't repeat what else he's saying. Oh, man. You know what, Tom? I was a 14-year-old high school quarterback with my father, and I, I know that one. Notre Dame timeout. We'll be back. Harrison Smith with his third career interception has given the Irish good field position. Our first down line brought to you by Xerox. Irish having to spend the time out. Now here's the first down play. Reese will be sacked. Back to the 48-yard line after that sack. The sack was by uh, Salinga and uh, Shelby. As we look at the Adidas starting lineup for that youth defense with Christian Cox, seven and a half career sacks. Chaz Walker, the former walk-on, their top tackler. A couple of small corners today now. Burton 5'9", Chapman 5'8". But the Irish so far unable to take advantage. That one tipped by Derek Shelby, incomplete. So Notre Dame's offense, two possessions, two plus, counting this one. Now with the nine plays, they've gained less than 10 yards and have not picked up a first down and have spent two timeouts. So it's been a frustrating start for Tommy Reese and the Irish offense. Yeah, ineffective in the run game and no completions yet in the pass game. You'd show blitz and then back out of it. So Reese finds Michael Floyd. Actually, it was Hughes, 33 instead of three. He made the catch right on the sideline. Yeah, they rotated to a cover three look where the corner comes up and then the linebacker, and he threw, actually sprinted right into it and rolled into it. Martinez had an easy play and a good tackle. Then Turk will put it. And Shaky Smithson, high towering punt. Smithson calls for a fair catch and makes it with an Irish player right in his face. And now it's time for our Gatorade Prime to perform. Utah's Shaky Smithson put on a couple of punt return clinics. Touchdowns already this season, September 11th. 
He went 55 yards against UNLV for a score. And the next week at New Mexico, 73 yards for a touchdown on a punt return. Leads the FBS with 22.8 yards per punt return. And that's our Gatorade pride to perform. And he also went 78 yards against Iowa State, but didn't score. Got tackled on the two-yard line. Gets special in the return game. Leads back up to their 13-yard line. Fake handoff. Asiata. Nice run on first down. Stopped by Harrison Smith after a gain of nine. Nice job again up front. Utah blocking well. I think one of the real strength of this football team is up front. They're with a two back set here. A lot of cross motion. Nice job with the backside guard. Tavita Stevens pulling and wrapping. And again, Asiata, the big physical tailback, gets north and south. Under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Notre Dame still does not have a first down. They've had good field position, but unable to do anything with it. Had a good kickoff return to start the game. Had an interception. No first down. Reggie Dunn, the handoff. And he'll have a Utah first down. Situation where Matt Asiata's brother, Sean, playing that offset fullback position on a good block on the edge but Harrison Smith made the tackle and Tom I'm telling you they're trying to get Reggie Dunn involved in this game only three catches on the year eight re excuse me three runs and eight receptions already very busy today here's Wynn adjusting things play clock to three Got the playoff. And a swing and wide to Asiata. Good defensive play by the Irish. Allow him only a yard or so. Kerry Neal was the first man there. It's a really good job by Curry Neal. Disrupted the cross route, reacted up on the flare, creating a second and long. Asiata, Matt, and his brother Sean from West Valley, California. Second down and long. Win, plenty of protection. Rolls and throws it out of bounds. Ethan Johnson chasing him. They had to unload it. The Utes have allowed only four sacks this season. Three man rush. They drop eight on a second long situation. Did a nice job both bracketing the deep receiver Devontae Christopher and then on the other side this is the away from the ball side good job by Teo running underneath the tight end Moiai integrated pass defense when you drop eight it's very difficult for a quarterback to find an open receiver if you play your zones correctly third down and long Win again. The protection is good, and the pass is nearly intercepted. It was uh, dropped by Brian Smith. He nearly was able to pick it off. He's and got to catch that football. Cover two. He's going to run underneath and undercut Moiai down the seam. There he is. Redirects. Now comes underneath. If he doesn't get it, Teo might. But when you get opportunities, you've got to take advantage of it. Brian Smith, good play, but finish it. But the good news is they held on fourth on third down. So now fourth down for the Utes. Punting with Sean Selwood. Got it. Blocked. And recovered by Robert Blanton. He blocked it and recovered it untouched off the edge. This is a poor job by Utah and a tremendously athletic play by Blanton. Blanton with the block and the recovery and the Irish touchdown. He's going to come off the edge. Right here. This guy has got to get a piece of him. They ignore him. Only two men rushing. Blanton makes the easy block, picks up the Sunday hop, touchdown. And so Rucker will attempt the extra point. And it is good. So the Irish offense sputtering. What do you do? How about a block punt for a touchdown? Robert Glenn blocks it, recovers it, and the Irish 
have the lead for the first time. Notre Dame football brought to you by Valvoline. 2.04 to go, first quarter. Notre Dame with its first lead after Robert Blanton, the native of Matthews, North Carolina, suburb of Charlotte, blocked the punt and recovered it for a touchdown. So Ruffer set to kick off for the Irish to Smithson. Smithson, one of the deep men for the Utes. And we'll take it right about the one or two yard line. Smithson picking his way forward. Flags flying everywhere. Smithson changing his route. You see why they call him shaky. <laughs> Caught from behind and ridden down at the 45 yard line, but flags came in early. On the return by Smithson, shaky 44 yards, but I think it's going to be nullified. Yeah, it was a block in the back early in that return. During the return, holding number 51 of the return seat, 10 yard penalty, first down. Now let's. Here's the penalty. You can see the block in the back or the hold right there on Jackson. The cool thing is Jackson got off the ground and made the tackle. That freshman hustles his tail off. Now, let's go back to the punt and the touchdown. Ten up. They're expecting a block. So these guys here are looking inside. Look at this. Comes untouched. There are only two people rushing. Now look at it from a different angle. You get a great look at this. Nelly Aasa. You've got to have some vision. He's locked in up front. Doesn't even see Blanton blow by. So after the penalty, the Utes backed up to their own 10 yard line. And the crowd getting into it. Receiver fell down. Jordan Wynn, just as he released it, Devontae Christopher fell down. So it'll be second down and 10. And again, it's a little bit wet out there. It was down on the field before the game. We've had some intermittent rain. Receivers have to be conscious of it during making their breaks. And Tom, this is if you're a Notre Dame fan, what you want to see is a big play, an interception, a block punt. Now you want your defense to get a three and out. That's what good teams do. Win with a shovel pass. It's complete to wide. Eddie Wide uses his blockers well, then blasted out of bounds at about the 20 yard line by Brian Smith. But a good play by the Utes. It'll be a first down, Utah. Yeah, just a shovel pass. I really like they've got a four man rush with a twist on. The twist opens up the inside. Eddie Wide takes it. Good block on the edge. Gray's trying to keep outside leverage. Just enough for a first down. Utes from the 20. Win changing the play. Make sure everybody knows what's going on. Makes a handoff up the middle to Wide. And Eddie Wide continues to get a workout in the running game for the Utes. Stopped after a couple of yards by the front of the Irish defense. They pull their guards an awful lot in their scheme, and, and 54 to beat a Stevens, I think, is one of the better pulling guards I've seen this year. Watch him come out, a lot of misdirection here, wraps into the hole with correct leverage. Really a good job. That's about the fourth or fifth time he's wrapped into the hole and made the correct block. Inside the final minute of the first quarter. Win. Keeps. And slide down at about the 25 yard line and Tom we had a chance to meet him yesterday and no surprise to me he, he needs to slide right there Con contact might break him in half he's very slight 6-1 listed as 195 we he has never seen 195 <laughs> in his life he's skeptical of that a bit from Oceanside High School Oceanside California where he was twice all state and a four-year member of the honor roll He'll go to the sideline as the opening quarter will come to a close. That's the end of the first quarter with Notre Dame leading Utah 7-3. Back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC presented by Valvoli. The Utes 
make their first trip to Notre Dame Stadium and we start the second quarter with the Irish up 7-3 despite no first downs and just nine yards of offense thanks to a Robert Blanton block punt and a scoop and score. Third down and six for Utah. Wynn has to pull it down and run for it and he'll slide. I don't think I he don't had think it. He, I think he slid a little too soon. He's going to be marked short of the first down covered there by Manti Teo. Yeah, he had to get past the 30, and they're going to mark him around the 29 and a half or so. So the punt team comes out for the Utes. And thanks to a premature slide by Jordan Wynn, Notre Dame will get the hold on third down. Yeah, he had a chance to make a play there, and I, and I think if uh, you know, no matter how slight you are, you want to drop the shoulder and get the first down there. Sean Selwood will punt it, averaging 42.7 a boot this season. And Goodman is deep for Notre Dame. This is a short one. Goodman says, get away from it. Takes kind of a lateral bounce, then a Notre Dame bounce, and will be down around the 40-yard line. So the freshman quarterback, Tommy Reese, back out onto the field. And of course, Reese forced into action because of the incredible string of injuries Notre Dame has had to key personnel. Just look at this. If you see the Kyle Rudolph, Theo Riddick, Armando Allen, Dane Christ, Coach Kelly was telling us they amounted for over 400 yards of offense a game. And yet in the game against Tulsa, they were able to uh, replace that with some 400 yards of offense, but incredible string of injuries that Notre Dame has suffered to key players. You could almost uh, go down the list and not pick out any more key players than the ones that have been felled by injury. Armando Allen on the sideline watching on senior day with a hip injury that uh, had to have surgery. Here's the first down handoff, and it's a good run on this first down play by Jonas Gray. So Gray gets his first carry. That's the best run of the day by the Irish rushing attack. That's a left guard here. Pull out in front. Bang. There's the trap block right there. They move inside of it. Good job by Jonas Gray, who I still maintain at 235, 240 pounds, has tremendous feet for his size, and he's a downhill runner who's a load to bring down. Junior from Pontiac, Michigan, getting some playing time today. Here's another gray run, and this time there's a flag down as he has stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Tom, we should mention that that guard pulling last time was Chris Watt. Holding on the defense, number 98. Wow. Ten yard penalty, first down. Salinga called for the hold, and that is an automatic first down, so a key penalty again against the Utes. The big question for Utah coming in, Mike, was whether or not they could bounce back emotionally after yep. being defeated in what they saw as a huge game against TCU. The BCS Busters, two of them last week, it was 47-7, so how would the Utes respond? And you'd have to say maybe a little flat with the penalties and mistakes here early. No question, and Tom, what I always look for emotionally, and that's a great point, are penalties and special teams, and that's where they've really let down today. Six penalties, 45 yards. Gray trying to get to the outside and does. He's got a blocker. Jonas Gray down the sideline to the 10. Slips and falls short of the five-yard line being chased by Lamar Chapman. But it's a 36-yard run by Jonas Gray. Questionable block by Michael Floyd, but it's not called a penalty. And I maintain all season long, here's Floyd. It's going to bounce. And Michael Floyd's going to get a real good block on the edge on Boo Anderson. Now, I'm not sure if it's on his back right here. Watch him right there. But it wasn't called. And again, Jonas Gray at 235 pounds has better feet than you anticipate, better speed. And that was a huge play for the Irish. The insertion of Gray into the game has put a charge into the running game. And there's uh -oh. Floyd getting tangled up as he went for the end zone and the penalty called. He was tangled up with Brandon Burton. Burton, as we pointed out earlier, only five foot nine. Yeah, Burton's their bigger, more physical quarter. And right here, he loves press gets his hands on Floyd. The problem is he's pressing him, but the ball's already in the air. Once the ball's in the air, hands have to be off. 
So first and goal for the Irish at the three-yard line. And Floyd in the end zone from Reese for the touchdown. Michael Floyd with his ninth touchdown reception of the season. And the Irish with an impressive drive. They got their running game going with Gray. And then Tommy Reese throws his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Ruffer for the point after. And Ruffer boots it through. So the freshman quarterback getting his first career start throws the touchdown pass to Michael Floyd. And the Irish increase their lead. Notre Dame 14, Utah 3. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Valvoline. Guarantee your engine up to 300,000 miles. By Discover. It pays to switch. It pays to discover. By ING. And by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Jonas Gray, a 36-yard run, the longest of his career. And an interference penalty against Utah sets up Michael Floyd to receive the 25th touchdown of his career. Ruffer to kick it off with Shaky Smithson deep for the Utes. They bounce and bounce out of bounds. Yes, there's the flag. Yep, field position. So Utah will get great field position as Ruffer uh, sends it out of bounds. That'll get him a, a lecture over on the sideline, too. Tom, I like the structure of the touchdown pass. Notre Dame anticipated and got both pressure and man coverage. Pressure came here, man on Eifert. He's going to sit it down right on the goal line, and then Floyd's going to work right behind the man coverage against Brandon Burton. Eifert sits it down, Floyd goes over the top, and Tommy Reese put it exactly where he needed to, up high for a six-foot-three wide receiver where only he could get it and Burton couldn't. That's really good of, execution. Kind of what they had in mind in the pass against Tulsa, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know you were going to go there, Thomas? So from the 40, after the kick out of bounds, Utah puts it in play. And swing it complete to Asiata. Nice run, crosses midfield, picks up a level on first down. Brian Smith wrapped him up there. You know, Asiad is an interesting guy. He got a sixth year courtesy of the NCAA, hurt his knee last year, only played in four games. And he's really the heart and soul of their team, a two-time captain, run game, pass game, and pass protection. Matt Mary with three kids. This pass is complete to Brooks, Jeremy Brooks. Really nice catch on a low pass from Brooks in between the linebackers to the 42-yard line. Asiata carries for another first down as the Utes now getting their offense moving. There to the Irish 35-yard line, first and 10. And, and to me, this is Utah football right there. Asiata in the zone scheme. Asiata in the counter, little check downs. There's a false start. Look at this. Wow. Another false start as the penalties continue to pile up against the Utes. That's their seventh or eighth of the uh, first half. Eight penalties with 11.38 to go. Notre Dame has yet to be called for an infraction. And, and you know what? They're unforced penalties. That's Schlatter off the left guard. That's the third or fourth of those we've seen with the offensive line. And, and it tells me, Tom, that like you said, they're having a little bit of an emotional hangover from the beating they took from TCU last week. Looked like Coach uh, Whittingham was attempting to up the tempo a little bit to get his offense on track as they shoot for that first down line brought to you by Xerox. There's another false start. And all Notre Dame's defensive line did was shift. And the shift caused Cullen to jump. That's Cullen second. Kyle Whittingham's got to be beside himself. That's nine first-half penalties. 
Nine penalties now for 60 yards. Watch the shift with Notre Dame's defensive line, hand down. Now they're going to shift, and Cullen will jump with the shift. There they go, and he moves. They got to have more discipline than that up front. Jordan Wynn retreats. Protection is good, although he's hit as he delivers, and it's incomplete intended for Smithson. Protection was good, then at the last minute it sort of broke down, and uh, Kona Schwinke was able to hit him just as he released the football. And when you can play coverage and get that kind of heat on the quarterback, Schwenke, number 90 off the edge and right up the middle, number, excuse me, 96, Schwenke and Ethan Johnson, that's just a great job by those two defensive linemen individually getting pressure on the quarterback when you're playing coverage behind. Ethan Johnson, the junior, and Kona Schwenke, the freshman, combining on the hit, making it second down. Shovel pass. Asiata can't quite turn the corner as the pursuit of the Irish defense able to get him over by the sideline. Brian Smith and Harrison Smith streaking after him to make the play. Now, Carlo Calabrese is another one of those key injuries, but stepping in for him is Brian Smith. 58. Watch him from the inside out, just able to make this play. Eyeballs the wide out, comes underneath him. If you come under against Army, and he will be a key guy in their defense against that option. The Utes facing another third and long. Win. Protection good. Comes underneath. It's to Asiata, and the defense reacts and stops him. Manti Teo came up in a hurry, and it'll be fourth down and ten for the Utes. Thanks to a couple of false starts, Notre Dame able to hold Utah in this possession. Fourth and 11, and Tom, those penalties put Notre Dame in a situation where they could play coverage each down. They rushed with four guys. Defensive coordinator Bob Diaco loves that type of coverage, an opportunity to sit back. There he is behind the pole. <laughs> he probably he probably sat there on purpose trying to hide behind that pole. Yeah, he, he doesn't like a whole lot of publicity. <laughs> he was one of the best linebackers I've seen come out of the Big Ten in the, in the late 90s at Iowa. He's tough, he's intense, and he's a rising young star in the coaching profession. Whistles blow with Selwood in punt formation. There's a flag down on the field. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Wow. Well, Coach Whittingham has got to be. you got to be kidding. Stunned by the mistakes made by his team here in the first half. Now, that's not a killer because you're punting and yeah. the end zone's right there, but still it's, it's indicative, indicative of exactly. Now remember, they had the punt block for the touchdown earlier by Blanton. So uh, Goodman awaiting this boot if Selwood can get it off. Just a token rush for the Irish. Fair catch called by Goodman. And Goodman makes it. <laughs> Irish will have the football when we return to Notre Dame Stadium on Senior Day. They're up 14-3. The first half has been a flag fest for the Utes. Ten penalties, 65 yards. Keep in mind that Notre Dame has only 55 yards of offense, and they've gotten 65 yards in penalties from Utah. A 14-3 Notre Dame lead. Nowhere indicative in the statistics. However, like you just said, Tom, ten penalties. You block a kick. To me, just not emotionally ready to play this football game. Penalties, special teams, miscues. Sierra Wood back in it, running back for the Irish. They take over at their own 17-yard line. And off to Wood, nearly burst free, and then is, is grabbed by the uh, shoe tops and taken down by Matt Martinez. Dame with a little power football. You know, I mean, they really, with Jonas Gray, when he came in, I thought really kick-started that last drive. Downhill running, bounced one outside. That was pure power right there. Two tight ends, point of attack play. Empty backfield this time for Tommy Reese. Good discipline by Notre Dame's offensive line not to jump there. Shelby baiting them. Reese fires, it's complete. 
Sierra Leone with a nice run after the catch. Picks up the Irish first down. Finau with a tackle for Utah as we look at the cards. Now, this is something new for the freshman quarterback. These cards and those symbols on there mean something to him. Now, they don't all mean anything, but when they hold up a card, those symbols mean something, usually on the coverage that uh, Tommy will be facing. So he looks over at those cards and able to change the play if he needs to. There are the cards. He's looking over again. Cards up. is tied in short gain on the play Alex Tom when Tommy Reese has been on the sideline Brian Kelly has been right there with him usually with his back to the defense just teaching uh, Tommy Reese interesting very different than how he talks to Dane Christ he's been very calm just going through coverages formations Tommy this is the hitch route here this is that this is that um, you know he really likes this kid's IQ his football IQ though he's still very young told us yesterday he wouldn't uh, hesitate to light into him if he needed to but uh, tempers it with a little uh, understanding that the young man is just learning that pass way off the mark from Reese tended for Robbie Toma I presume a little disconnect there now, you know I, I think you have to treat your 18 year old freshman a little differently than you do the upper class and, and I think Ryan Kelly's gone out of his way to be more of a teacher than a disciplinarian with Tommy Reese. So now third and nine for the freshman. Looking over at the cards. This will be Sierra Wood trying to get a block and can't. Swamped by the youth defense led by Brian Blecken. Got nothing going on that running game. You know, you got to count the box, and he gives them some freedom at the line of scrimmage. This safety comes up. They get eight in the box here, and they run right into it. And I think what Notre Dame has to be aware of is Utah's a single high team. They're probably going to end up in single high, and you've got a chance to attack them out wide in the pass game. Ben Turk, high snap. He pulls it down. Lucky there was no rush. Smithson says stay away from it. Bounces out of bounds. That was a full out return and Notre Dame's fortunate that nobody from Utah was rushing. And Utah is going to take over at about the 33 yard line. Notre Dame football presented by Valvoline. Nice catch by Turk who got it away. Mercedes-Benz presents Army versus Notre Dame top performances. 1969, the last meeting between Army and Notre Dame to take place at Yankee Stadium. The Irish jumped out to a big early lead behind the tandem of quarterback Joe Theismann and receiver Tom Gatewood. Theismann and Gatewood connected for two touchdowns, and the Irish never looked back, pounding the Black Knights 45 to nothing. Top performances presented by Mercedes-Benz. And on a rainy senior day at Notre Dame Stadium, looking forward to that matchup in primetime. Army and Notre Dame from Yankee Stadium next week. Last I saw, Army was beating Kent State, which would make them bowl eligible. They've had a heck of a year. Here's the handoff to Wide with a short game. And of course, it'll be the first football game ever at the new Yankee Stadium, and preparations began as soon as the baseball season was over for the Yankees, as you see in this time lapse. And a big milestone earlier this week as the goalposts went up. So the Yankee Stadium getting ready for its first ever football wow. game, just barely fitting inside there. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm looking forward to that next week. An army with that option attack. Watch out, baby. Army and Notre Dame in prime time on NBC a week from today. Win rolls, delivers, and Wall makes a great play on wide to stop him for a loss in the play. Back to the 30-yard line, a loss of five for Darren Walls in his final appearance, the senior from Pittsburgh. Walls and Kerry Neal did a great job in an early identification of screen. Here's Walls out here, and then watch Neal right here. 
do a great job understanding, recognizing, get rid of him, see the lineman come, look at Kerry Neal attack, and Darren Walls is untouched with a sure and secure attack. We saw Darren's dad, Darren Sr. yesterday on the campus, the number one basketball scorer all time at Waynesburg College. Third down and long. Jordan Wynn chased. Tries to throw it toward one of his players, and it looks like Asiata was in the neighborhood. Wow. Which would be not a grounding. Prince Shembo was bearing down on Jordan Wynn. Again, he has only been sacked four times this season. Part of it is protection. Part of it is he throws it away a lot. <laughs> he wanted the seam route. Teo broke it up. There goes the freshman, Prince Shembo. And a correct call because Asiata was in the area of the pass. They really like Prince Shembo. Had a concussion a couple of weeks ago against Tulsa. Cleared the play this week. An explosive young pass rusher. And with Darius Fleming questionable with an injury, Shembo needs to step up. Freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Selwood's punt toward Goodman. and calls for a fair catch and makes it. And it'll be Notre Dame's ball when we come back with 4.55 left in the first half. Misconnect for Utah here. And Manti Teo celebrates. Forcing the punt. This is the greatest opportunity I've ever had. I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Every day I wake up and remind myself that the likes of George Gibb and Paul Harning are able to put on the same helmet as me, and it's, it's a spectacular feeling. Well, coming up on our Discover Halftime Report, Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio with the remarkable story of Notre Dame kicker David Ruffer. And they'll be joined in the studio by Peter King and Mike Florio to discuss all the big news from around the NFL and look ahead to tomorrow's game in Pittsburgh between the Patriots and Steelers. And, of course, all the scores and highlights from around the college football world. Notre Dame first down, just under five minutes to go in the first half. 34-yard line of the Irish. Pressure on Reese, who finds Floyd. And Michael will be wrestled down short of the 40-yard line. First to arrive was Brendan Burton. Boy, they did a nice job up front with pass protection. They're going to bring a linebacker on an X stunt. Watch the protection. Robert Hughes steps up. Nice job. Allows plenty of time to get the one-on-one -on -one out on the edge and the recognition that Floyd had for Burton with no help. That... Uh, Will be the first penalty against the Irish, a false start by Chris Watt. Number 66, five-yard penalty, second down. The uh, Utes were showing blitz, forced Watt into a false start. So the first penalty for five yards against Notre Dame. And Utah has been whistled ten times for 65 yards. And Chris Watt, the left guard, in for senior Chris Stork. Reese looking to the sideline. There's a nickel right there. Lamar Chapman playing a lot of games with the rookie. He's up here. Fake to Wood. Reese, a lot of time. And has a man wide open. And throws it so high that Wood cannot hold on. Got his hands on it, but could not hold on. Yeah, Wood's got to catch that. I know it was high, but that's a very catchable pass. I think Reese was trying to put some air under it to make it. He's so wide open. That was a wheel route. And the disappointment from the 18-year-old freshman. Notre Dame has not converted on a third down today. They're 0 for 4. Huge show blitz. Showing blitz up top, Tom. Like you said, Chapman is their leading sack man, and he's their corner, and also their nickel. Here they come. Reese unloads quickly and has his man for a first down. Eifert. Tight end is the quarterback's best friend in that situation, and he gets him for 14 yards. Overload blitz and a great job attacking it. Everybody's coming here, so you go right in behind to Eifert in man coverage. Here comes the overload. Linebacker late to get over, Chaz Walker, and really a good timing throw by Tommy Reese. First third down conversion for the Irish. Gives them a first down just short of midfield. 
And Reese will be banged to the turf about the 45-yard line. A sack by Christian Cox of the Utes. Yeah, good job by Cox. I thought he had an opportunity, Reese, to get rid of the football early to the crossing route by Michael Floyd. But once he missed them, I like the fact that he pulled the ball down. Floyd's going across the field. Give it to him now. You got a chance. Now tuck it away and don't have a fumble. Good hustle play by Christian Cox, keeping the play alive the whole time. Senior from Bountiful, Utah, with three sacks this season, eight and a half in his career. Corner blitz. Trouble pass complete to Hughes. And Hughes tripped up at the midfield strike by J.J. Williams. Brandon Burton. This is one of the, the I, I watch a lot of tape, and this team does an awful lot of corner blitzes. You're going to see Burton right here coming off the edge. Typically, you want to attack the safety coming over the top, but that's a good call against it also. Good little flip, pick up significant yards, and now you got yourself in a third and ten situation. Reese rolling to his right, delivers, but a slip down by Robbie Toma. Robbie Toma made the reception, but immediately slipped on the turf short of the first down. That's frustrating. You had him have a chance to make somebody miss in space if you keep your feet. Sierra Wood did a good job backside picking up a blitzing linebacker. Well, we've had rain. All day long, and Toma there as his feet go out from him. He was he was wide open when he caught the pass, and perhaps could have picked up a first down, but slips to the turf, bringing up fourth down and five. With T.J. Jones out, with Theo Riddick out, they've asked Robbie Toma to, to pick up some of the slack. He had four catches for 67 yards against Tulsa, and he I really like him in the slot. Quicker than fast, laterally explosive, good hands. Another one of those Hawaiian products, yeah. right? Knows Kalani Satake. Teammate of uh, Manti Teo. <laughs> There's a look at Robbie getting a consolation on the sideline. Uh, Utah called a timeout, preserving a little time here in the first half. That was their first timeout. Smith's in a fair catch at about the 11-yard line. That's where Utah will take over with one tick. More than two minutes left in the half after a 42-yard punt with no return. Notre Dame up 14 to 3 with 201 left in the first half and, and the Utes 10 penalties for 65 yards. How frustrating for head coach Kyle Whittingham. Left tackle, Collin, jump. They've had four or five procedure penalties. Burton, the corner, pass interference on the goal line against Floyd. And the big one, special teams, Blanton, untouched off the edge, gets the big hot touchdown. And, Tom, I've said all the time, penalties and special teams will dictate whether or not your team's emotionally ready to play, and the Utes are in a hangover from the beating they took from TCU a week ago. They take over here at their own 11-yard line. There's another run by Asiata. Interesting to see how aggressive they will be offensively now. Down 14 to 3, clock winding under 150. Northwestern knocking off Iowa. Michigan beating Purdue. Look at what Wisconsin did against Indiana. Wow. Pass to Christopher. Incomplete. Jordan Wynn is a young quarterback. 13th career start today. I think he's a better distributor when the run game's working well. He doesn't have a big arm outside the numbers. He's got a wet football today. He's got a young quarterback coach, too. Brian Johnson, he's 23 years old, former great quarterback here. And Tom, I guess I said to him before the game, I'm like, dude, you're 23. You can't even get a rental car when you're on the road recruiting. How do these kids listen to you? Crowd trying to get the defense jacked up on third and seven. And Dunn, the speedster, apparently short of the first down, hit by Jamora Slaughter, the safety. See where they spot the football. It will be very close, but apparently short of the first down. 
And Utah will have to punt from deep in their own territory. More slaughter back in the football game. Safety number 26 comes up. Bang. Now, it's not as good as it looks because the running back slipping right there. But, boy, I love the aggressiveness of Jamara Slaughter. Now, Tom, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. I was going to say Utah started the game by converting on two of three third downs, but they're 0 for 5 since then. Clock is still running. And keep in mind, look at the timeouts. Notre Dame only has one timeout left because of the two they burnt earlier with the confusion in the freshman quarterback early in the first quarter. 43 seconds left. Kelly and company about to get the ball back. Go to Notre Dame Extra on NBCSports.com where you can see all the action, including an online-only bonus camera, in-game highlights, plus live coverage of the halftime band performances. Go to NBCSports.com. So on fourth down, Sean Selwood is on to punt for Utah. Goodman draws a bead on it and makes a fair catch. So 35 seconds now till intermission and coming up on the Discover Halftime Report, Jimmy Roberts, the story of walk-on kicker David Ruffer of Notre Dame, joined by Peter King and Mike Florio for NFL News and the preview of the Patriots and Steelers and scores from college football today. Now, Tom, with this amount of time left, 35 seconds and only one timeout, I think your goal is to get the football between the 30 and 35-yard line. David Ruffer is good for 50-plus, but it's a wet day. It's difficult for your plant foot. So you don't want Tommy Reese to make a big mistake, but you also want to see him get the football down the field. Maybe Michael Floyd try and make a play. Steady will hand it to Jonas Gray, who jump-started the Irish running game earlier, and he gets only a yard or so, <laughs> and a few stray boos from the fans. Interesting. I mean, hey, you, know, you look at the head coach, Brian Kelly, trying to throw the ball at the end of Tulsa, <laughs> yet here he's going to deflate the football at the end of the first half. Kind of interesting. Going to let the clock run out to end the first half of play. Tommy Reese with a touchdown pass to Michael Floyd. The Irish also got a blocked punt and a scoop and score from Robert Blanton to lead Utah here at halftime by a score of 14 to 3. Let's go down to Alex with Coach Whittingham of Utah. Coach, what's hurt you most in the first half of this game? Well, a few things. Number one, uh, the block punt. That was something that uh, can't happen. Uh, breakdown of protection. Uh, number two, penalties. And uh, defensively, we haven't played bad except for that big play. You know, we gave them a big play there uh, on the run. But uh, we got to get something going on offense. That's our issue right now is uh, no offensive production. Down 11 points. How aggressive does that mean that you have to be in the second half offensively? Well, you know, there's no no panic. We got the uh, ball to open up the second half. We got to get something going. You know, we have had no offense this entire half. Thank you. All right, so Notre Dame leading Utah 14-3 to at halftime. And stay tuned now for the Discover Halftime Report. As Coach Kelly and the Irish on senior day make their way into the tunnel and head for the locker room. Don't forget the halftime performances of the Utah and Notre Dame bands at NBCSports.com. Now let's go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio. Halftime on senior day at Notre Dame Stadium with the Irish leading Utah 14-3 as Notre Dame makes its reappearance getting ready for the second half. And Mike, of course, we talked a lot about Tommy Reese and the offense of Notre Dame, but give some credit to the defense in that first half. That's a great point, Tom. You know, while we have to recognize that Utah has imploded with sloppy play and penalties, I think the bottom line is they've averaged 422 yards a game and 41 points. Coach Bob Diaco and this Notre Dame defense have held them to three points and 118 total yards. Great effort, smart game plan by the Notre Dame defense. Well, it's time now for our Valvoline guarantee play. Got to be the special teams play. Blanton coming off the edge. They show 10 up, but they only rush two. Horrible job by Utah. Great job by Blanton. He gets the block. He gets the bounce. He gets the touchdown, and that's our balance. Valvoline guaranteed play. Plays like that aren't guaranteed, but Valvoline can guarantee your engine up to 300,000 miles. Well, throughout the season, we continue to look at many of the unique things that Notre Dame students and professors are engaged in off the field. And today, we travel to the other side of the world. 
And ready to start the second half at Notre Dame Stadium. A look at our Valvoline halftime stats. Look at the big one is on the bottom. Penalties 10 for 65 by the Utes. No question. Neither offense lighting it up, but Notre Dame has made all the significant plays of the ball game. Notre Dame will kick off. David Ruffer has it teed up and ready to go. The dangerous Shaky Smithson awaits the kick. And Ruffer boots it to the one yard line where Smithson gathered it in. Got away from the initial wave. Fumble and it fumbles the football. Notre Dame recovers. Talk about Notre Dame making every big play. You would expect Utah emotionally to come fired up out of the locker room. And what happens? Steve Filer, I believe, who's one of the best special teams players there, gets a piece. And then here comes the hit. In Austin Collingsworth, perhaps. And Daniel Smith. 28, right? Look at yep. that. It's Collingsworth, Collinsworth puts the helmet on the football. Collingsworth put his, uh, as you said, helmet right on the football to dislodge it. Wow. They Big are play. Getting so much production on special teams from Collingsworth and Bennett Jackson, two freshman wide receivers. I love the toughness with both those kids. Collingsworth making a play. First down at the 26 of the Utes. Tommy Reese, first pass of the second half to the end zone, and a touchdown to Duval Kamara. Kamara, who's been the forgotten man this season in his senior year from Jersey City, with his eighth catch of the campaign, first touchdown this season, and the seventh of his career. 26 yards to the senior on senior day, Duval Kamara from the freshman. Ruffer for the extra point. And it is good. So bang, bang. Austin Collinsworth puts his helmet on the football. Notre Dame recovers, and then the touchdown, Reese to Kamara. There's Kamara's route. The safety's got to make this play, and he can't get over the top. They roll to the right. Excellent blocking. Safety takes a poor angle. I don't get Blecken's angle at all. Kamara runs away. Reese puts it on him. Well, that looks easy, doesn't it, Tom? So a disheartening beginning for the Utes, and Reese celebrates his second touchdown pass of this game and the sixth of his young Notre Dame career. As you said, we figured the Utes would come out with renewed energy, a tongue lashing, no doubt, from their coach after appearing to be flat in the first half. And they fumble the kickoff thanks to Austin Collinsworth. And then in one play, Notre Dame strikes for the TD, and they're up 21-3. If you put the special team tapes on for Notre Dame, 28 and 86 flash all the time. Two freshman wideouts, and again, I can't underscore how much I love toughness in wide receivers. That tells me down the road, not only will they catch the football, but they'll also cover. Smithson on the sideline with Jeremy Brooks replacing him, but he fields it halfway through the end zone and takes a knee for the touchback. So Smithson, who had fumbled the kickoff to start the third quarter, was on the sideline for that one, fielded by Brooks. And now Coke Zero explores the playbook of possibilities. And Harrison Smith made one of the big plays of the game early. Play action, when the quarterback rolls away, the safety's got to jump the deep crossing route. Bootleg, there's the throw. Harrison Smith undercuts the route. The recognition and the execution was phenomenal. Coach Zero played look at possibilities. Good defensive play so far by the Irish. The longest drive for Utah today in their seven possessions was that eight-play field goal drive, their first of the game. Eddie Wide gets the call and gets two or three yards. Manti Johnson, Brian Smith, and Manti Teo. Everybody in on that one? Yeah, Teo doesn't make the tackle, but watch the recognition and the block destruction. 
attacks the guard right there, allows 58 Smith to come in and clean it up. And again, you don't have to make every tackle, but you've got to have your correct run fits in the Notre Dame defense. Jordan Wynn. Utes quarterback gets the snap. Shovel pass just dumped it off. Eddie Wyatt is there and is driven back. Manti Teo was right in his whiskers when he got the football. Good linebacker play. Teo Shimbo. Creates another third and long situation. Third most by Notre Dame freshman last year and on his way to the most by a Notre Dame sophomore this season. Third down and eight. Utah's favorite pass set. Cross motion now to a three by one. That's the tight end in motion. Win stands in the pocket across the middle. Man wide open. And the catch made by Moy Ai. Moy Ai has a first down. That's a gain of 25 yards. One of the biggest plays of the game by the Utes. And Moe Ai came in motion and then settled in the middleman of a tight bunch. A quick hit, but then Teo jumps the short crosser when he's got to get deep. And here's the sack. Prince Shembo with the sack of Jordan Wynn. I'm telling you, they love this young man. Prince Shembo coming off the edge. Put him in a three-point stance, let him destroy the integrity of the running back's block, comes off him, and that's an explosive young freshman, six foot two, 243 pounds. And Tom, for the first time in a long time in Notre Dame Stadium, you can sense momentum going the Irish way. Three and a half sacks this season for Shimbo, the freshman from Charlotte. Wins pass is caught and then dropped immediately to the ground as Brooks made the reception and hit by Gary Gray, preventing any further gain. You know, you get second and 20, you can do whatever you want. You can bring pressure, you can drop in coverage. Bobby Diaco typically likes to drop in coverage. Four-man pressure, they drop seven, and that's what the Irish corners are good at. Gray, Darren Wall, Blanton, they will all come up and tackle you. Only three yards on the completion. So another third and long. We've said that a lot. Win finds an outlet and it's incomplete. Intended for wide from the backfield. A lot of true freshman defenders stepping up. Kona Schwenke. The defensive end getting pressure on right after the Prince Shembo sack. And Tom, we talked a little bit of, with Brian Kelly about burning all the red shirts off the freshmen this year, but because of the amount of injuries they've had to. Selwood again in punt formation. Low drive. Hit, hit an up man, but he's able to turn around and get it for a moment. That was Blanton. That was smart. Really, really smart. Short Robert punt Blanton. hit Blanton, and he recovered it. So here's Utah, ranked 14th in the nation, averaging 41 points a game. But it's been all Shembo and the Notre Dame defense today. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Begin building your foundation for life at NorthwesternMutual.com. By Verizon Wireless, introducing the Droid X, the next generation of does. By Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And by Gatorade. Introducing the G-Series, Gatorade has evolved. Well, the Notre Dame offense has suddenly become quick strike. First touchdown was three plays, 61 yards. The last one off the fumble. One play, 26 yards to Kamara for the touchdown. So the Irish take over after the Utah punt. They're at their own 37-yard line. You see the cards being held up for the freshman quarterback, Tommy Reese, who hands it off to Sierra Wood. Wood found a seam. 
Then a little push to his marker and rips off about eight yards on first down. Martinez made the tackle. Really love when you can see an offensive center and a guard get out in front. Watch these two guys get out in front of Sierra. Bang, there's the pole. Braxton Cave turns it up in the hole. The lead set guard, Chris Watt, gets the key block. That's how you draw it up. That's how Vince Lombardi did it in Yankee Stadium years and years ago. There are the cards held up for Reese. Those symbols mean something to him, if not necessarily to anybody else. That's a toss to Wood. Wood able to turn the corner and get outside for a big game. Down short of the 35-yard line before Taplin Ross pushes him out. That's an 18-yard run by C.A. Wood. Again, Michael Floyd's unselfishness this year extends to the blocking game. Watch him get on the corner, Burton. That's the key block. It's a quick pitch. They beat the hang defender, and you got to take care of the corner, and that's exactly what Michael Floyd does. 38-yard line of the Utes. Reese, pocket rolls right with him. He throws back to Floyd. And Michael Floyd, he uses a blocker. He's to the sideline. Still on his feet and finally knocked out of bounds. Michael Floyd with a gain of 24 yards. See, I really like Tommy Reese when they move the pocket. I liked it a couple weeks ago against Tulsa. I like it here. Really good patient. Double cross route. Locates Floyd underneath. He picks up a bunch of blocks. Sierra Wood was the first one. That's it. Use the pick. Why not? Looked like a matador as he uh, dodged <laughs> Michael Floyd. All he needed was a cape. 14-yard line now. Irish on the move again. Pierre Wood. Utes able to stack him up for a short game that time. Chaz Walker, their leading tackler, in on the play. Taylor Dever, the right tackle, did a nice job out there. And you finally, you see some rhythm. You feel some momentum and rhythm to this Irish offense. And that's what it takes in college football. Just, you know, young guys get an emotional lift with a big fumble, and all of a sudden, they look like a different team. There's Dever, a senior who can apply for another year of eligibility. 36 seniors all told, but 11 of whom can apply for another year. For the end zone, Reese has a man, and it is caught for a touchdown again by Kamara. <laughs> Tommy Reese <laughs> got a big lift from Zach Martin, one of his tackles, after he threw Duvall Kamara on senior day senior with his second touchdown reception of the game and Kyle Whittingham and the Utes have been shocked by the Irish here today. Ruffer the extra point. Notre Dame off the bye week needing time to heal emotionally and physically and they come out and take it right to the 14th ranked Utes. It's now Notre Dame 28 and Utah 3. It's been all Fighting Irish offense and defense and special teams today. And a look at our Valvoline scoring drive. Duval Camaro catching his second touchdown pass. That's the first time he's had two TD receptions in a game since Navy in 2007. Dame losers of their last two senior days to Syracuse and then to UConn and uh, leading Utah here 28 to 3 as you saw the downcast sideline of the Utes Reggie Dunn fields the rougher kickoff he can fly gets to the outside and runs out of room as Blanton had the angle on him and got him out of bounds you know, this touchdown, I really believe what Reese has is a great feel for timing and accuracy. He doesn't have a huge arm. Toma's going to go flat and then a corner route. Watch the pickup over here. They have tremendous protection, but I love the timing from Reese. Bing, the ball's out. Back corner of the end zone against the defensive back, Conroy Black. Now look at the route. Really good job by Kamara, who only had seven receptions into the game. Beats press coverage easily. Makes the catch. Utes get it to Asiata. And he's got 
four or five yards. You mentioned that uh, against TCU, Utah kind of got behind and came out of its running game last week and uh, apparently uh, determined not to repeat that mistake today, but they're down 28 to three and uh, the clock moving in the third quarter. I'll tell you what's interesting is uh, what a great feeling for that kid, huh? And off again to Asiata. He'll have a first down this time as he crosses the 40-yard line. For Asiata, a gain of nine. Lua, uh, Capron Moore, Lewis Moore, Capron Lewis Moore makes the tackle. Alex? Hey, Tom, well, one of the things that Brian Kelly told me at the half was that he knew coming into this game defensively they could not give up any of those big explosive plays. Had won the 25-yard game by the tight end of Utah, but he said keeping Utah in between the hashes has been really key to this defense, and from there, everything else is kind of set up and allowed them to play the way they have, Tom. And indeed, as Asiata once again gets his third straight carry. I'll, I'll tell you what's interesting. I think Kyle win winning... Uh, Willingham down 28 to 3 has decided he's got to calm this thing down a little bit. Come out running the football. They were in their heavy set that time. Defensive tackle Nelly Aasa in at tight end. And I think he's just said, okay, let's get this thing calmed down. There's still seven and a half minutes left. We got a quarter and a half or more of football. Get it calmed down, move the football, stop this momentum. Coach Whittingham, who's had such a remarkable record at the University of Utah and here they come out into their Wildcat formation. Asiata takes the direct snap. Falls across the 45 yard line after being hit by Zeke Mata. And Mata did an excellent job coming from a deep safety position. Remember the Wildcats in the game. Here he is here and look at the heavy set over here. He recognizes it, attacks it, all the blockers get eaten up, and now a one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. And Tom, I said it earlier this year, the thing I'm most impressed with with the Irish secondary is their ability to tackle in the open field. Their corners and their safeties all tackle. And then step off a penalty against uh, Kelly's defenders. And so Utah will take the ball all the way into Notre Dame territory with a first down at the 38-yard line. Penalty was on Blanton, messing around with Shaky Smithson after the play. Asiata. Asiata. Asiata to the 35-yard line, just inside it. Shembo the tackle for the Irish. So Utah has a drive going here. As we said, their best drive of the game was the first one, which wound up in a field goal. And now trying to keep the drive going, looking at that Xerox first down line. Remember that first field goal was after getting a short field because Notre Dame went for it on fourth and three and didn't get it. Last six possessions by the Utes have wound up in a punt. Asiata. Brian Smith hit him first. Then uh, a lot of other defenders came along, including Capron Lewis Moore. Senior Brian Smith having a big day here on senior day. Nice job facing him up in the hole. To me, this has got to be four down territory here for Utah, down 28 to three. Be patient. Here comes the noise in the building. Down and four. Flip. That was Asiata. Yeah, he's going to he, no gain on that. He slipped in the hole. That's been their go-to play in the power game. They've got Sean Asiata in at fullback. And watch the cut. And he slides. No gain. That's going to bring up a critical fourth down situation here. Tom, I don't think they've thrown the ball once in this drive. Have they, they have not. It's been all Asiata. All Asiata all the time on this one. And now they're faced with a fourth and four. And we'll call a timeout. Timeout Utes with 4.55 left in the third. They're down 28-3.
Whittingham and the Utes set to go for it on fourth down and four, trailing 28 to three. And the Irish defense, which has played so well today, led by Brian Smith, who's equaled his career high with 10 tackles. On his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium. Shaky Smithson back in the game, wide receiver. Jordan Wynn under pressure, completes the pass. Smithson able to duck the first man, still on his feet. And out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Shaky Smithson, he got that nickname back in a tough part of Baltimore where he grew up because when they played street football, nobody could catch him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Tom, great job by Jordan Wynn identifying where the man coverage is. Look, the safety's over here. He can't help out. You've got man coverage and your best receiver. Runs a little whip route, great accuracy, breaks the tackle of Gary Gray and makes a big play out of it. Gain of 24 yards, first and goal for the Utes. Asiata stopped short of the five-yard line. Gary Gray will get credit for the tackle. I give Kyle Whittingham and his offensive staff credit for being patient. He get down 28 to 3. And Tom, we've talked about them coming out of their, their offense so early a week ago against TCU. This drive, one pass, all the rest have been runs. If they score here, they're back in the football game. And they're in the red zone for the first time today. Here's the give to Dunn. Notre Dame are ready for it. They stop Reggie Dunn. It'll be third down and goal. Great read by the linebacker, Teo, and then the, the contain outside. Watch Teo and then watch Walls. Teo recognizes the jet motion, forces it out wide. Walls does his job as the contain man, and that's the definition again of team defense. Went for a loss of two. So now from the eight, third down and goal. Watch crossing routes, rub routes. Utah's favorite in here. Win fakes the handoff and throws to the end zone incomplete. Intended for Deontay, Devontae Christopher, and he and Gary Gray sort of fighting in the end zone. Christopher wanted a flag, but no flag forthcoming. Gary Gray is a physical guy. Inside technique, he sees the football the whole way. Now, you can question whether or not, but look, at they both have hands on each other. Typically, I'll tell you if I think it's fast interference. He had his arm around it, but Devontae Christopher was pushing just as much as Gary Gray. So, fourth down and goal from the eight. Wynn takes a low snap. Fires for the end zone incomplete. No flags. Notre Dame has held. Up, Gray and Devontae Christopher. Here it is. He's going to cross. Watch Gray from the backside. Does he wrap that right arm around him? Look like a good play to me. Notre Dame takes over. Notre Dame football brought to you by Valvoline. Rocking and rolling here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish up 28 to 3. Let's go back to that last play. Gary Gray involved in two bang-bang plays with Devontae Christopher. Look at the right arm on the back right there. Now, former defensive back that I am, I would tell you that that looks like pass interference to me. Is it ticky-tack? A little bit, maybe, but that is a critical, critical play in the game, and there's no question, Tom, contact before the ball got there. But no flag, and Notre Dame takes over. At the eight-yard line with a handoff to Wood. Here tripped up as he totes it across the 10 by J.J. Williams. Look at Christopher who is locked up with Gary Gray and those two passes to the end zone. And Notre Dame passing Tommy Reese who opened uh, the game first half 8 of 13 43 yards and a touchdown. 
in this third quarter in two possessions. Look at that. Four for four, 79 yards and two scores. Yeah, and he threw the ball 54 times against Tulsa. In my opinion, if he threw it any more than about 25 to 30 today, they were going to lose the ball game. So you can see efficient use of the young man's arm. Wood, nice cut back. Then slammed down in a hurry by Shelby. You know, Tom, we were talking last night about this Utah team, and you know the more tape I've watched about them, we talked about the BCS and who belongs and who doesn't and, and the non-BCS schools, and the more tape I watched of Utah, I came to the conclusion that they're really well coached by Kyle Whittingham. However, from a personnel standpoint, their athletic ability is slightly above average. So to me, they're not a top 10 team. They're a solidly coached team, and this is not an upset. Notre Dame belongs in the same category as this team athletically. Reese resets Eifert and then hands it off for a first and run by Wood. Chris Stewart in his final uh, home game with the block to Springwood on that one. Nice call, Tom Hammond, doing the analyst work. Left guard, exactly right. Senior gets up in the hole, bang, 351 pounds. That's like a snowball downhill, man. You can't stop that. Wow. And uh, as we've talked all season, amazing, maybe the only man that is in law school while playing football. If that doesn't work out for him, if football doesn't work or law school doesn't work out, he can always do be a time management expert, huh? <laughs> I give that kid a ton of credit, man. Wood will try the right side uh, with no success. Drag down fans on a horse collar on Shelby. And Shelby made the play. Loss of five. Brian Kelly wants the horse collar. Now, initially, this is a great play by Shelby. Look at him split a double. Comes up high on the left side. Now, where's that right hand? From there, I don't know where it was. The left hand was up high and right there. Uh, that's a horse collar, is it not? It looked real close, Tom. <laughs> Pretty good upper body strength, though. One yeah. arm. Second down and 15. Keep it on the ground. Yeah. Dancing and dodging and breaking free for a first down to the 35-yard line. Lamar Chapman makes this tackle after a 20-yard gain. Remember, this is the Irish running game that really looked anemic in the first couple of possessions, and suddenly they got a big run from Jonas Gray, and since then they've been able to run the football with Wood and Gray. Stay with your run game. Chris Stork, turn it up in the hole. Great job. Now look at the shake and bake. Sierra Wood, one of the most highly recruited high school running backs out of the state of California. If you give him a sliver, he'll make you pay. And that was the final play of the third quarter. It ends with Notre Dame leading Utah 28 to 3. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Valvoli. Our Valvoline score by quarter shows that the Irish dominated the third, outscoring Utah 14 to nothing to build their lead to 28 to 3. Utah scoring a field goal on their first possession of the game after they held Notre Dame on fourth down. And since then, the Irish defense has dominated and the offense has come alive under that freshman quarterback, Tommy Reese. Hands it to Sierra Wood. Wood with his sixth carry on this drive. He's carried every play so far on this drive. That was made by Bill Anderson. I really like their offensive balance when they get in a rhythm like that, where they're not throwing every down, where you've got to be afraid they're going to punch you in the face a little bit, and then you come back with play action. I think Brian Kelly has found something that works pretty well this game. Combination of the run game, and I love Tommy Reese on play action. Reese, under pressure, got it to Floyd. Floyd Gang tackled right at the first down marker. Matt Martinez, first to wrap up Michael Floyd. 
That was a little double screen look. He first looked to his left where they had a screen set up for running back Sierra Wood, and then a little wide receiver screen underneath to Michael Floyd. And it's good for a first down. From the 45-yard line, Tommy Reese getting his first start today and uh, growing up right in front of our eyes. Sierra Wood, the workhorse. Gain of two. This is Wood's 16th carry of the game. Irish very content, Tom. Take their time here. Pace is slowed down. Makes sense. Take your time. Run the clock. Plays being signaled in. Got Eifert out wide with a safety. Trying to force Utah to make a decision how they're going to use their defensive backs against a split tight end. And coverage. Reese hangs it up for Floyd and almost caught it. It goes incomplete. Michael Floyd almost came down with a big catch. Floyd underneath coverage, really well covered by Burton that time. That's been a heck of a battle all day long. Six feet, 190 pound Burton against the six foot. Three. Look at that shot right there with the left hand stripping the ball away from Floyd. Burton's had a tough day. Pass interference, touchdown pass against him, but heck of a play there. That incompletion to Floyd broke a string of completions by Tommy Reese. He had hit eight in a row before that miss as he signals for a timeout. Too many men on the field. So timeout taken by Notre Dame. That is their first of the second half. They lead it 28-3. There's a proud papa, Bill Reese, Tommy's father. Uh, Tommy telling us uh, football has been a part of his life as long as he can remember. His dad, Bill, an assistant at UCLA and in the front office of several NFL teams, Chicago, Cleveland, San Francisco, Kansas City, now involved in uh, football operations at Northwestern University. And here to uh, see his son play today, along with Tommy's brother, Danny, who is a UCLA senior. And Tommy just throws that one away behind Michael Floyd. And that will bring up fourth down. Dad's a very highly respected personnel guy in the league for a lot of years and, and coached with one of my favorite people in the world at UCLA with Terry Donahue for a bunch of years. You know how they got that program right. revved up. And I think one of the sons is there, right? Playing football, Tom? Yeah, Danny, his brother, uh, Tommy's brother. He's a holder on the team. As Ben Turk is on to punt. Toward Smithson, who says get away from it. And goes out of bounds. At the 23-yard line. Well, Sunday night is football night, and tomorrow night, Tom Brady and the Patriots will head to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bob Costas hosts Football Night in America live from Heinz Field, and coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. Tom, I think that's the best football game in the NFL this weekend, and I've always believed Bill Belichick is most dangerous when coming off a bad loss. Cleveland embarrassed them. Peyton Hillis had a big game. I think that's going to be an epic battle in Pittsburgh, and I can't wait to watch it. Utah trying to get something going here in the fourth quarter. And the pass is complete to Smithson. And shaky tumbling over players. He's able to get a first down. That's a gain of 12. There's that crossing route I've been talking about all day long. Coming from both directions, almost a little rub. He comes right past his own guy, catches the football, and he's dangerous when he has it. We mentioned uh, Shakey grew up in a tough part of Baltimore. Here's the pass. That one is caught by Matthews. Shakey Smithson grew up in a tough part of Baltimore, he said. Went to Frederick Douglass High School, then went to junior college, and wound up at the University of Utah. He has, with his mother's... Wait for this play. It's a handoff to wide. 
With his mother's permission, he has become the legal guardian of his younger brother, Anthony, who is 16 years old. And Anthony uh, doing great under his brother's tutelage with a four-point GPA and playing football. Quite a young man, Shaky Smithson, who has uh, really turned his life into something very positive after tough circumstances growing up. Eddie Wide makes that catch. Alex? Tom, you mentioned Anthony, uh, the brother of Shaky Smith, doing better than OK living with his brother in Utah last weekend. He played in his football, uh, high school football semifinals. He's on his way this coming weekend to play in the championship game for Highland High School. His brother, Anthony, a quarterback there in high school, Tom. Well, Shaky himself, quite an athlete in his days at Frederick Douglass High School all city in football basketball and baseball A great story taking care of his brother like that really cool and the pass wide open and it's complete to Brooks Brooks came absolutely wide open downfield, and Jordan Wynn found him for one of the biggest plays of the day for the Utah offense. Robert Blanton got way too carried away down here with the redirection to number one, and he gets beat right in behind him. After a 20-yard gain, Utes with the first down at the Notre Dame 27th. Utah on the move, and another wide open man. This time it's Christopher. He makes the catch just short of the first down. Remember, this is a Utah team averaging 41 points a game, ninth in the FBS. And held him only a field goal, but on the move here in the fourth quarter. The same route combination again that time against Blanton, where they high-low the corner and cover two. Correct decision each time by Jordan Wynn. Blitz comes from Notre Dame. They pick it up. And so Wynn goes to the end zone in traffic, and it is incomplete. Intended for Brooks and broken up by Robert Blanton, who's having quite a game today. Blanton's a 5'11 corner with long arms. I think he's very good at press. He's up against Jeremy Brooks, and Brooks is going to run the seam route. Very quick receiver. Blanton's right in his hip pocket. What I love is that he turns and located the football. Look at him. That's a lost art amongst defensive backs. Finding the football, making a play on it, rather than panicking and having an interference call. Really good job by Robert Blanton. You said Blanton having an excellent game, and now Jordan Wynn, who had hit five in a row on this drive until that one was knocked incomplete. Wynn again, throws back, caught. Nice move by Wide. Able to dodge the first defender, and then Schwenke chases him down. That's an eight-yard gain for Utah. If I have one complaint with Manti Teo's game, it's in the pass game and coming to balance when you have to make a tackle. Had a chance to make a play, overran it, gave him a first down. First down, Utah. Remember earlier, Notre Dame stopped him after the Utes had first and goal from the eight. Here's the Wildcat formation. It's Eddie Wide, direct snap. Up the middle, ran into his own man as the uh, Irish defenders, uh, led by Teo, able to stack it up in the middle. Sean Swinar, the nose tackle, did a nice job also on that play. Remember, here, here's inside. Take a look at those guys. Nice job inside out right there. Wildcat, you know they want to run the football. Second down and nine. Jordan Wynn back in the shotgun. Low snap, he got it. Plenty of time, drills it. It's complete to Smithson. Got away from the first man almost a second before he slammed down by Manti Teo. And the whistles had sounded. Tom, there are different ways to defense a crossing route, and they went back to it again. Watch the inside linebackers pass off the crossing route as it goes across. Teo will be the second guy to pick it up. Here comes the cross, and there, right there you see number 56, Kerry Neal, hands it off to Manti Teo, who picks it up. Shaky doesn't want to go down, does he? <laughs> no, he's still shaky. He's a thickly built kid.
kid from the waist down. That was a complete pass for a loss of three, so it's now third down and 13. And the pass incomplete intended for Brooks. And once again, Utah drives down the field, gets into the red zone, and now faced with a fourth down. They went on fourth down earlier and were held by Notre Dame from fourth and goal. This one fourth down and 13. They can't make a first down without scoring. And they got on the big stage last week against TCU, got down, and they started <laughs> dropping past. Look, noise, right? Coach Kelly turned cheerleader. <laughs> noise. Best way for a defensive lineman to get get off is with high crowd noise. Here they come. Fourth down. Here comes Notre Dame. Hang it for the end zone. And incomplete. <laughs> Intended for Brooks. Defended by Gary Gray. And Notre Dame holds again on fourth down in the red zone. Heavy, heavy pressure coming from the inside. Forced the throw quickly. And Jerry Gray, excuse me, Gary Gray, again, in the middle of everything today, right up here. Locate the football as long as you get your head on a swivel and make a legitimate effort to find it and get your hands on the football They won't call you if he didn't turn around there. I guarantee it would have been a pass interference penalty Notre Dame football is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance responsibility. What's your policy? by Adidas by E-Trade, investing unleashed. And by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. Now we saw Coach Kelly leading the uh, cheers on that fourth down play. The Irish succeed with a stop and take over at their own 16-yard line. This is where the freshman quarterback has to be calm. Let the clock run down. Use as much of it as you can. Wood. Sierra trapped in the backfield and dropped for a loss by Justin Taplin Ross. And on that last key play on fourth down, it was pressure that got the quarterback Jordan Wynn. They have seven men up on defense. The tackle comes down. The tight end goes around. And then what happens? Freshman Prince Shembo untouched. Comes through, forces the ball out quickly. Now Gary Gray makes the play. Zero coverage, no free safety help. Pure man and a heavy blitz dialed up by Diaco. Is that alliteration, Tom? <laughs> is that what that is? Got my attention. <laughs> there was a uh, look at the uh, sideline yeah. cards they're holding up. And that was, wasn't that a picture of Alex? Yeah, we need to see this one again. Here's a, here's a replay. Well, look at that. There you go. How about that? George Washington's up here. A golf cart over here. What's that? The Notre Dame. Dome. That's the dome. And then our own Alex Flanagan. What do you think, Tom? That's the scooter formation, I'm reliably told. <laughs> Can you? As, <laughs> as they hold up those cards to help their freshman quarterback identify mostly coverages. Hmm. Tommy Reese. I could go a lot of directions with that, but I'm going to leave it alone. Third down for the Irish. And a timeout. Play clock was about to expire as Reese took a long look at those cards. Probably Alex's picture, as a matter I, of fact. I think he got flustered. <laughs> Six and a half minutes to go, and the band of the Fighting Irish celebrating a 28-3 lead. Time for Notre Dame Now, presented by Sprint, the Now Network. And when the offense of the Irish was doing uh, virtually nothing, Robert Blanton got the Irish on the board with a blocked punt and scoop and score. The Utes marred by penalties, although they have not committed a penalty in the second half. All those in the first half. And Tommy Reese growing up before our eyes. The freshman quarterback having a day for the Irish. A whistle that stops the play before it can get started. A false start by the Irish. The offense for 75, five yard penalty, third down. Taylor Dever, who is a senior but can apply for another year of eligibility. So that makes it third down at 14 now. 
the Utes need to make, make a play, obviously. 28 to 3, 635 left. It's third and long. I don't think that, that Coach Kelly's going to allow this freshman to throw the football down the field very far at all in this situation. Draw. Back deal handed off to Wood. Nice run by Wood uh, when it didn't appear that he would be able to get much at all. He is still short of the first down, but he got 11 yards. Yeah, that's the right call. Forget the first down. Put the ball in Sierra Wood's hands. Don't put it up for grabs and punt. The defense has played extremely well all day. I think Coach Kelly recognizing that. Well, Brian Kelly has had a tough few weeks. The embattled Coach Kelly leading cheers today as his uh, Irish defense holds off the high scoring Utes twice in the red zone and saw his offense finally get untracked after a slow start and saw his special teams play well too so it has been an all round contribution from the Irish here on senior day Notre Dame takes a timeout as the clock has ticked down to five minutes and forty six seconds. 28 to 3. It'll be a punting situation for the Irish when we return. Notre Dame bidding for its first senior day win in three years, leading Utah 28 to 3. And for the Utes, who won their first eight games of the season, in danger of having back to back losses. Then Turk putting on fourth down, and the beauty Smithson gathers it in and immediately is hit. There's a penalty flag down. Could be interference with the. The ability to field the punt, then they might get a personal foul as they throw Smithson down on the sideline after obviously was out of bounds. Yeah, I think this was Bennett Jackson, the freshman wide receiver I've been so high on all season on the special teams. Kick catch interference, kicking team number 86, 15 yards on the foul. First catch. There used to be a two or three yard halo. It's no longer that. It's just a common sense application of giving him enough time. You can see he's basically touching him. I, I love the coverage. I love the location, but you've got to stop, bend your knees, and you can't make contact like that. That's a good call and a freshman mistake. So the correct call made on Jackson, and the step off puts it into Irish territory at the 48 yard line. Utes running out of time. That pass is complete to Christopher. Ducks out of bounds to stop the clock after picking up 11 yards and a first down. Been really impressed with that front group. He got Jordan Wynn got hit again by Ethan Johnson. It was only a three man rush, but they've had constant pressure on Jordan Wynn. Wayne gets rid of the football, tries to protect himself. Ethan Johnson coming off the edge. Painful, Tom. Tough afternoon for the young Utah freshman, or not freshman, but sophomore quarterback. Jordan Wynn, and they're tending to him and helping him on his feet. And Kane, Terrence Kane, who was a starter last year, is warming up, and uh, if... Win can't go, and we would assume he can't. He's been sitting there on the turf for a while now. Uh, it'll be Kane that will come on for uh, Utah. But I said a minute ago that it was a uh, all-round effort today by Notre Dame. You agree with that? I agree. I think for the first time this year, Tom, we've seen a four-quarter effort in all three phases. And we can talk about Tommy Reese and Deval Kamara and that offense, but I'm going to start with special teams. Number one, the punt block for seven points. Number two, Austin Collingsworth on the second half kickoff, forcing the fumble. The next play, they get Camaro in the end zone. So I think it's been a combination of defense, special teams, and then Tommy Reese in that offense. So Jordan Wynn walks to the sideline. Well, Notre Dame needed something good to happen after the blowout loss to Navy, after the tragic death of Declan Sullivan, after the last-minute loss to Tulane. And they came out ready to play today. So here is Terrence Kane. As we said, he was a starter last year. Started eight times. Hit 64% of his passes for 1,600 yards. He's played in six games this season and hitting at a 76% clip. He's thrown six touchdown passes without an interception this year. And more dangerous with his feet than win. 
Kane's first pass behind his intended receiver Smithson and incomplete. Tough one on a kind of cold, windy, rainy day to come in without a chance to warm up when you're down 28 to 3 and you've got to start pumping the football immediately. Poor throw to a wide open receiver, but you got to give the kid a chance to get loose. Well, this will go down in the books if Notre Dame can hold on as an upset. They were underdogs today, and Penn State leading Ohio State, Georgia, and Auburn. Georgia had been leading, but that one tied at halftime now. Northwestern upsets Iowa. TCU having their way with San Diego State. Here's Kane scrambling around. Hit. Dropped at the 45-yard line. Hit hard by Ben Ty Teo. Teo got a running start. And put it on Terrence Kane for a loss of eight. Open field tackle, Manti Teo, explosive. Watch what happens with Kane, where he's very dangerous with his feet. Feels pressure, comes back to his left. Here comes Manti. He's going to explode into his underneath shoulder. Great tackle from the inside out, understanding where his help was. Boy, that's a good play by Manti Teo. And Jordan Wynn returns to the quarterback spot for the Utes. Whistles will stop that play. Mm. All start on the offense. Number 11, five yard penalty, third down. Luke Matthews for the false start. Remember, the Utes had uh, several of those in the first half, false start penalties, and that's their 11th penalty overall of the game, but their first of the second half. Cardinal sin for a wide receiver to be offside or in any kind of motion. All you've got to do, you don't have to hear anything. Look down the line of scrimmage at the football and move when it moves. Standing in that pocket, which is rapidly collapsing, and then finds Brooks. Brooks out of bounds, stopping the clock at 3.47. Notre Dame trying to break a string of 11 straight losses to AP-ranked teams. And the Utes come in ranked number 14. Shembo against the left tackle, Cullen, who was the number one tackle in the country coming out of junior college, overwhelms him. Tom, look at the leverage. A 6'2", 